If you click this video, you've probably set a goal to lose fat this year. Maybe you want abs for summer. Maybe you're tired of feeling uncomfortable in your own skin. Maybe you just want to look in the mirror and not hate what you see. Here's the problem. Most diets fail. Not some. Most. A study on The Biggest Loser followed contestants six years after the show. Out of 14 people, only one kept the weight off. Five regained everything. Two ended up heavier than before they even started. That's not a success story. That's a disaster. And it's not just reality TV. A 2020 review analyzed eight weight loss studies. All of them caused initial weight loss. All of them saw weight regain after the diet ended. Some people even overshot their starting weight. So why does this keep happening? Because getting lean for a wedding or a vacation is a completely different goal than getting lean and staying lean. And most people don't know the difference. I'm Finn from FA Fitness, and today I'm showing you exactly how to get lean and stay lean using science, not suffering. Before we get into the strategies, let's make sure everyone's on the same page. Fat loss happens because of a caloric deficit. You consume fewer calories than you burn. That's it. No magic. No shortcuts. Just math. You consume calories by eating food. You burn calories in four ways. First, your resting energy expenditure. That's the calories your body burns just keeping you alive. Heart beating. Lungs breathing. Brain functioning. Second exercise activity, thermogenesis. That's calories burned from training. Third, non-exercise activity, thermogenesis, or NEAT. That's everything else. Walking, typing, fidgeting. Fourth, the thermic effect of food. That's the small number of calories your body burns digesting what you eat. Let's say you add all that up, and it's 2,500 calories burned per day. If you eat 3,000 calories, you're in a 500-calorie surplus. You'll gain weight. If you eat 2,000 calories, you're in a 500-calorie deficit. You'll lose weight. Sustain that 500-calorie deficit, and you'll lose about one pound per week. Simple, right? Here's the part most people miss. As you lose weight, the number of calories you burn decreases. This is called metabolic adaptation. Your body gets smaller, so your resting energy expenditure drops. Your body becomes more efficient, so exercise burns fewer calories. Your NEAT decreases because your body becomes less fidgety. And you're eating less food, so the thermic effect drops too. That 500 calorie deficit you started with, it won't be 500 calories after a few weeks. Your body adapts, so you'll need to lower calories further or accept that weight loss will take longer. This is normal. This is expected. Don't panic when it happens. For any fat loss plan to work long term, it needs three things. A sustained caloric deficit to cause fat loss, weight training to preserve muscle mass, and enough protein to support that muscle. Usually, 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight. Everything else? Meal timing, number of meals, specific foods, that's all personal preference. But these three? Non-negotiable. Now here's where most people screw up. They turn to short-term strategies to lose fat as fast as possible. Crash diets, cutting out entire food groups, isolating themselves from friends and restaurants. Yes, these tactics work in the short term. That's why they're popular. But they also lead to muscle loss, nutrient deficiencies, uncontrollable cravings, and eventual weight regain. If you want to get lean and stay lean, you need a better approach. So let's dig into three long-term strategies that'll help you lose the fat and keep it off. The third one is the most neglected, but probably the most important. The first long-term strategy is to diet so slowly it barely feels like you're dieting at all. The general science-based rule is to lose 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week. If you weigh 200 pounds, aim for 1 to 2 pounds per week. Want to lose 20 pounds? It should take 10 to 20 weeks. But here's the thing. There are benefits to going even slower. I recently lost 24 pounds over 40 weeks. That's nine months. I started at 187 pounds, and I'm now at 163. That's just over half a pound per week. And because I took my time, the weight loss felt ridiculously easy. I ate out at restaurants. I went out with friends. I had pizza and sushi. I didn't feel deprived. There were weeks where my weight spiked. Friends visited, I gained two or three pounds. Thanksgiving happened, I gained four pounds. But when you zoom out, those spikes are tiny blips in the overall trend. This mindset is smarter because it helps you stay chill throughout the diet. You won't feel deprived or eager to quit. And when you reach your goal weight, you won't feel like you've been suffering. This makes maintaining your leanness way easier. The extra time is worth it. To lose at this rate, aim for a 20% caloric deficit below your current maintenance. Take your maintenance calories and cut 20%. If you don't want to track calories, that's fine. Track your body weight and make intuitive lower calorie food choices most of the time. For some people, that's enough. For others, intermittent fasting helps. Personally, I loosely track calories and protein without stressing over carbs and fats. It takes me five minutes a day. One more thing, give yourself a realistic end target. You can't maintain 6% body fat year round. 
At a certain point, your sleep, libido, energy, and mood will tank. You'll think about food constantly. It's not worth it. Most men can realistically maintain 10 to 20% body fat. Most women, 18 to 28%. Find an end point that's realistic for you. Someone else's 8% might be your 18%. And that's okay. The second long-term strategy is to leverage habits to make the diet feel as easy as possible. Right now, you're motivated. You're watching this video. You're ready to go. But eventually, that motivation will dip. When it does, if you haven't built the right habits, you'll veer off track. However, if you can operate on autopilot, you've got nothing to worry about. So here are two science-based habit-building techniques that'll make your life easier when motivation fades. First, temptation bundling. This is when you pair an activity you already want to do with an activity that supports your weight loss goal. I love watching true crime videos on YouTube. That comes naturally. But I don't love doing cardio. So I link the enjoyable activity of watching crime videos with the less enjoyable activity of cardio. Now I'm way less tempted to skip it. Some bodybuilders do this by playing video games while doing cardio at home. If you're trying to build the habit of meal prepping on Sundays, save your favorite podcast for meal prep time. Make the new behavior more gratifying in the moment. Second, align your environment with your goals. If there's a food you consistently overeat, leave it on the shelf next time you're grocery shopping. If you're stress eating at night, keep alternative stress relievers close by. Books, puzzles, video games. Use them for stress relief instead. If you're missing gym time because you scroll on your phone before getting out of bed, leave your phone in a different room. Or pick up an old school alarm clock. Small environment changes make massive differences over time. Don't rely on willpower. Build systems. The third and final strategy is to have a smart post-diet plan. This is the part almost everyone neglects, and it's probably the most important. Now, there are two common mistakes people make after reaching their fat loss goal. First, they don't have any plan at all. As motivation decreases, they revert to old eating habits, and they gradually creep up in weight until they're back to square one. The solution? Have a post-diet plan. Second mistake is meticulous reverse dieting. This is when you gradually increase calories from deficit to maintenance over several weeks or months. It's popular in the science fitness crowd, but I don't recommend it. If you're done cutting, why stay in a deficit? Get to maintenance and get on with your new goal of maintaining. Here's what I recommend instead. Go to your new maintenance calories right away. Finding your new maintenance takes trial and error, but it's usually 200 to 600 calories above what you were eating at the end of your cut. Let's say you were eating 2,000 calories by the end of your diet. The very next day, bump up to 2,200 to 2,600 calories. Probably closer to 2,600 if you didn't crash diet. From there, gradually increase calories until you get them as high as possible while still maintaining your body weight on average. Think of maintenance as a dynamic range, not a fixed number. You might maintain anywhere from 2,600 to 3,000 calories. Over time, try to increase toward the top end of that range. Monitor your average weight week to week. If you're still maintaining, add some calories. Why? Because more food means less restriction. Less restriction means easier maintenance. More food also improves training performance, which is always good, especially if you're entering a lean gaining phase. If you don't track calories, you should still track your body weight. Regular weighing is associated with better long-term weight maintenance in the research. Weigh yourself at least two or three days a week during maintenance. As long as it doesn't stress you out, this behavior alone will keep you accountable. Now, if you do everything I've said in this video, you will reach your goal. You absolutely will. But here's the thing. Most people need structure. They need accountability. They need a system that removes the guesswork. This is exactly why I created FA Fitness Programs. Whether you have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes, our workouts are designed for sustainable fat loss and muscle building. Progressive overload is built in. No guessing. No winging it. Just smart training that works long term. We offer three program options. No equipment. Dumbbells only. Or full gym access. Pick what fits your life. And unlike most fitness apps, we're not just giving you workouts. We offer personal training that includes nutrition coaching, macro tracking, accountability check-ins, and everything you need to get lean and stay lean. Our personal training clients get customized meal plans, weekly progress tracking, direct access to coaches who actually respond, and a system that adapts to your metabolism, your schedule, and your life. We're not selling you a cookie-cutter plan. We're building a sustainable lifestyle. Check the links in the description. 15-minute workouts, 20-minute workouts, 30-minute workouts, and if you want the full experience personal training that covers everything, nutrition, training, accountability, we've got you. Stop choosing between quick fixes that don't last and suffering through diets you hate. Get lean, stay lean, and actually enjoy the process. That's the FA Fitness way. If this video helped you smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment and let me know what your biggest fat loss struggle is. 
I read every single one. I'll see you in the next video. Stay focused. Stay fit.